Hey man, so you've been doing a lot of cool content around like malware hunting and like you, you actually look for them and I know you're banned from some forums on the dark web. I want to see if you'd be open to maybe doing some collaboration with me where we look at some malware and can teach me the basics of what it is so I create malware and like hunt for them online. Absolutely. Hey, there's a whole lot to it. I know it's a little bit of a can of worms, but it should be a ton of fun. I'm all for it. Before we go uh, too far down the rabbit hole, though, I would love to ask, how much do you know already kind of about that whole world? Malware analysis, hey, threat hunting and all. How much are you in on that? I think I kind of understand what malware is, but if you ask me, like, do you know about this particular like malware that's been built and how to look for it? Probably not. I wouldn't know much. So let's assume I know nothing and I want to make a YouTube series out of it. So Im imagine if we're making a YouTube series of us teaching everybody about malware hunting and like malware analysis. Okay, sweet. Well, hey, you know what? Why don't you come on over? Hey, we could just get together in person, do some recording, and maybe that'd be really cool. Some IRL content together. Now that I'm here, John, tell me a little bit, like, what do I need to do to learn about malware? Well, I'd like to ask, if I may, hey, where do we kind of start? What do you know already? Do you, what do you, how would you define malware? What do you think malware is? I think malware could be anything that's like malicious. The point of malware is pretty much, it's disruptive, right? It's to either steal data, lock you know, the system down, it could be ransomware, for example. It's just anything that could be malicious on your laptop uh, that could steal, you know, whatever information you have or whatever the, um, the attackers are looking for or the adversaries are looking for. Yeah, that's a good gist. I mean, it's super simple, but malware literally meaning, oh, bad or malicious software. Uh, and you hit all the big ones. Ransomware is certainly up there. Information stealers are certainly yeah. kind of a, a big deal because that could lead to so much stuff. Um, and then, I don't know, anything, yeah, defacing. You get to the, the cheesy saying of disrupt, deny, degrade, all those things. Uh, but you're totally right. How do you think it met? How do you think it gets delivered? How does someone accidentally or un unintentionally, unknowingly get malware on their computer? I think the best example that I've heard someone like talk about malware was imagine like um, your kids use your laptop, your computer to oh, put yeah. games on there, right? Yeah. And free, I don't know, like twenty dollar Xbox gift card or twenty, <laughs> free Fortnite gift card, right? And they go and download some like extension, sets up on your browser, and then. And it just sits on your browser and steals data from you. I think that was probably one of the better explanations of a piece of malware. But I'm also, you know, assuming um, the old school like Trojans and keyloggers, you know, those were, I, I don't think, you know, I think I'm sure we have these keystrokers now that capture that data. Right. But the old school 90s way of uh, like a sub seven was, you know, a malware pretty Ooh. much, you know, like we're showing our age here a little bit. But... Sub seven, yeah, a little more. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I think that's a piece of malware. Uh, like it's still data. So I'm assuming, you know, emails, like phishing campaigns, um, they send yeah. you some sort of a file that you open, uh, these Bitcoin, you know, the free Bitcoin things that go out, like, oh yeah, Elon Musk is doing free giveaways on whatever, this coin that they launch. Uh, so I think those could be also a flavor of it, but I think the possibilities personally for me, it's endless. It's just however you can get into someone's system or into a corporate system even, like an entire network to sit in it, right? Totally. I think you hit on really a, a, a massive one because I think just having a shared computer, especially for a family, like, hey, you have, uh, I don't know, the, the business person, the, the mother, the father that's working their corporate job, and maybe they use, oh, SharePoint or Microsoft Teams, whatever they need to access their environment. Uh, but it's the same computer that the kids use. So they want to go get that Roblox mod or the, oh, those sweet GTA 5 sheets. And you see information stealers or malware that will run and have that whole array track down, oh, hey, we see your Discord Nitro capability and we see, oh, your access into Azure and AWS and the VPN that you use in your corporate environment. So that is, uh, I think, a spooky combination. <laughs> yeah. Is the the malware that sits on a personal computer, not, you know, your work computer is obvious, right? If someone's going after a corporate or a corporation rather, they want to get into that internal network. You know, the, the end goal is different. Right. But for, you know, um, a mother that works at, you know, some random store, for example, that doesn't do much, what is the end goal there for an adversary when they, you know, when do they in effect? Is it just, you know, credit cards and identity theft maybe? Or is there more to that that you have seen or heard that people have done with these sophisticated attacks? It's a tough one because there, there are absolutely easy wins from, yes, the credit card information, oh, the banking details, oh, the stuff that, again, could mean monetary gain for the adversary and the threat actor right then in the moment. Um, but 
it, it maybe that's sold on the dark web. Oh, maybe there's yeah. used in other purposes to again make more money. However, I think one important note to be done with those, even if it's oh on a personal computer, it can be later than used for blackmail or extortion or leverage, especially in like a social engineering scheme, because I already know everything about you. Whether or not in a corporate environment, hey, I've got your personal device and that could be attached to so many other things. Even if it's not, then I've got all the details so that I could very easily do like a help desk support yeah. IT scam. I'm like, hey, we need to run updates on your computer. Uh, I want to validate you are at this address. I want to validate this is your birthday. And then the scam is sold. So, so. The, the scam becomes more of a pivotal point. So yeah. you pivot from that personal device, whether you jump from the device to another device or you use it as a stepping stone. Yeah. Get to the next one. Interesting. Do you have an example you can show me? Um, I might. We could do some dumpster diving if you're totally cool with that. I like that a lot more, actually. <laughs> so I have this big pile of like random malware samples that I, again, may not have even looked at, may not have even given the time of, or, or, or of light here, but just a bunch of stuff that I've thrown on the shelf to say someday maybe I'll look at that. Someday maybe I won't. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. Maybe there's something that could be fun here if anything catches your eye. Uh, at this point, we could probably go ad hoc and see is there anything interesting here or we could go track down things online. Should we fire up the Tor browser, get in the dark web? I think people will enjoy the dark web because I feel like it has that... Uh that like coolness of being on the dark web and exploring things as they're happening. We can bench this. I, I liked a couple of the names that I see on this screen right yeah. here. I saw uh, some Discord game. I saw, I saw a GTA 5 reference in there. <laughs> uh, we got GTA 5 malware before we get GTA, GTA 6. So that's cool to see. I see BitTorrent in there and I see LoftCloud. There's a couple of names that I like in here. Yeah. But let's see what we find on the dark web. And if we don't find something, anything cool, then we'll give a crack at this one. Have you ever seen Amia? I have not. Uh, so... It's funny on, oh, the dark web, kind of the spooky, scary corners and crevices of the internet. Uh, it's still the internet, right? Yeah. It's still, hey, just maybe a different kind of gimmick to get to different locations that you want to get to. You have to know the onion address and how to get to what you want. But they still have sort of like a Google equivalent or like search engines, Bing, nice. Yahoo, even for dark web onion <laughs> yeah. links. Uh, Amia is very well known. It's probably kind of the knee-jerk reaction for a lot of folks to try to showcase this stuff. There are a whole lot of others. There's things like Haystack. There's things like Torch. There's things like hey, uh, Excavator. A lot of those can have not safe for work uh, advertisements or images or pretty odd, vulgar, inappropriate things. Um, but Amia is sometimes usually good. Okay. <laughs> But we could search for whatever we wanted to, which is kind of an oddball crazy thing. Hey, do we want to look for ransomware? Do we want to look for malware? Do we want to look for those Roblox hacks or um, keyloggers, whatever? Okay. We could keep this totally vague and then just see what happens, uh, whether or not we'll get things for sale in different marketplaces. Um, Kingdom Marketplace is a big one. Uh, Tor Market, the X-Wave Market, kind of some silly things. So we're going through a safari right now, is what yep. you're telling me. Okay. If you're cool with that. Yeah, absolutely. I would um, love to see this. Part. And we'll just see what weird stuff comes up but again i have zero guarantee i have no clue what we're gonna get into this is just uh, venturing into the dark quite literally <laughs> so with with so we're not technically looking at malware right now we're just playing it's a like google switching malware and what comes up except we're in the uh and, and we're looking in tour in a, we're looking at dark web so far so far okay. yeah so red dark line web stealer yeah, i was gonna say do you know that one i don't no, black hat what is it cracked download 2020 so what would that be, for example? So Redline Stealer is one of the information stealers, uh, like info stealers that will try, and usually pretty successfully, that Redline makes a, a big dent um, to see, hey, could we steal any information, like browser information, hey, session cookies, hey, connections that you have to um, any websites, usernames and passwords, of course, IP addresses, cookies. And here, they actually do a pretty decent job kind of explaining what the heck this thing the is. Browser, All cookies, those features, yeah. cookies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we've showcased that before. Uh, we've seen it around and there are tons of others. There's the thing called Vidar Stealer. There's a Jupiter Stealer. There is a Raccoon Stealer. Plenty and plenty of these. 
but Redline is usually pretty cheap. <laughs> wow. So this is just to license it for $200 or is that? Yeah, a lot of threat actors, genuine adversaries will try to make this a business. They make this an enterprise. They have this industry where it's literally like malware as a service. When we think of oh, software like as a mass. service. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and that like you could have a whole panel or like a backend dashboard, single pane of glass buzzword where you could log in to your account. You can purchase or buy more extended access to use it for another week or for another Another month or you could generate your own custom build with oh maybe the tooling or the features that you want or you'll go through these proxies and use this infrastructure so there's a lot of interesting things that they'll try to do to milk more money out of <laughs> so if someone's you know using this and adversary is using this what would be the output given to your target are you emailing them a, a link are you emailing them a file what are you emailing them or what are you sending to them that you want or you hope that install you know yeah or is that up to that person to create something that sits on top of this? Uh, that it's like a wrapper around it. More the latter. More they do, hey, it's up to the individual. How will you deliver how much to the adversary? Yeah. What were you going to do to get that initial access or distribute the malware? Um, we could try to track down some of those emails. I don't know if you've ever gotten the fake sponsorship emails. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure you get a ton. Uh, yeah. A lot of creators tend to. Uh, where, you know what? This just doesn't look real. This doesn't look right. This yeah. is from a strange email address. There's broken English. Um, and I've never responded. I don't know if you ever have. but I've been tempted to a few of them um, yeah. to do, but I, it has never gone any further than I was. So. <laughs> I think they're really good also if they're coming off a of content period. They expect who's trolling and who isn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it would be, so the, the output would be, you know, sending a malicious file and then it gets installed and so on. Is there any way to track these on them? How do you mean? Uh, is there is there a way you can track people that have created a certain malware? So if someone has created multiple, so Redline I'm authored by somebody, is there a way to know what other they have created, what other ones they have created? So let's say if someone like creates a, a PHP shell back in the C99 was created, they would put a signature in. Mm -hmm. But is there a version of that as a signature that you can track and see this was created by the same group or the same group of people? Sort of, kind of, uh, maybe not exactly with a lot of precision. Uh, there are a whole lot of tools like Virus Total or URL House or Abuse.ch and sort of their Malware Bazaar. Those are some cool resources. We can pull those up if you'd like. Um, and those will try to sort of cluster together even similar strains or malware families. But like the human being, individual malware author, that's probably a little bit harder to track unless they add their own cheesy, hey, hey made by Lead Hacks or 137. Yeah, like, um, like an artist's signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This even offers a supposedly a Redline Sealer download. So let's try to see what this looks like. We can literally go download this here. Moments later. Sad. We probably have some copies of Redline Sealer ourselves though. So maybe that's not a big Oh, so we can maybe go back to our archives and see if we can find anything. Oh, yeah. This one got sent to me in Discord. Hey, I got hit with a recent <laughs> solar marker. Uh, solar marker is one of the known sort of indicators of compromise or kind of similar to the signature that you were alluding to. Right. Just kind of a common attribute or a phrase that's included in there. Started with an MSI, so installer for Windows, and then executed a sketchy PowerShell command and wrote an obfuscated .NET DLL to the hard drive, to the computer. Um, Download from CrowdStrike, one of the EDR vendors here. So it's password protected, but here looks like the sketchy PowerShell. So this is what it was creating right. um, to write the .NET DLL to the disk. Yeah. If we want to dig into the code here, we totally could, but um, that is an interesting one without a doubt. So I am looking at this sample though, which is at least probably worthwhile for us to dig into. It looks like I have the 7-zip archive. So I'm curious if I did save that. What we could do is probably go extract that, go see if we can mess with it, throw it into some of those online resources like yeah. Virus Total, see if there are other similar things on some of the others. And then if we want to really jump off the cliff here and go explore that, we totally can. Uh, what I like to do is try to run these or explore and experiment with them in another environment that is not my host computer, for right. one thing. Uh, <laughs> so a virtual machine without a doubt, but I also really want to run them in a, like the opposite operating system so that if some way, somehow, something were to accidentally fire off, it wouldn't really run. Like a Windows executable is not going to run in the Linux environment right. and vice versa. Uh, so there is one Linux distribution literally called Remnux or reverse engineering malware Linux distribution. Uh, so I could move into kind of just a file directory here. I'll open up the files 
and then let's just create a new strange folder for solar marker and let's see if I can copy that in. So now that that is at least in some sort of safe enclave, I just want to extract that and then we can start to play with, hey, can we throw it at some of those other online resources? Uh, but stop me if I'm going too far, doing anything too weird. Yeah, well, that's, this is great. It is a 7-zip archive, so I'll extract that with the X. The password usually for malware samples is infected, just all lowercase. Nice, tools. okay. Looks like that came through. Checks out. So I have whatever this is. Um, and I do like to try to just do some quick enumeration, uh, see what the heck that thing is. Currently it's just data, data, which might not be that helpful. Let me see if I can open that up. Yeah, that is not helpful at all. Looking at this on its own, I'm not super convinced that it's really anything worthwhile for us, but I'm curious maybe VirusTotal or some of those other online resources can make a little bit more sense of it than I can. So we'll open up our web browser. Um, here, I'll just use Firefox and I can go to VirusTotal.com. Uh, VirusTotal is one of the awesome resources where you could basically have a giant like library of other strange, suspicious files, domains, IP addresses, or URLs to try to track down malware. Uh, we could upload a file, we could enter a URL, or we could search through its entire database, oh. but sometimes we need a little bit more uh, uh, coin to, to make that happen. <laughs> the enterpriseable, okay, right. fair enough. So let's just see if that extracted file is anything. So could people go to virus, virus Total and Provide a file just oh, yeah. to see if it is malware? Absolutely. Yep. That's a good tip for people that want to just triple check, double check. If you're watching this, you're not in the cybersecurity at least. That's a great way to do it. But it looks like it's already detecting some stuff. Too. Yeah, looks like a couple. It's funny because VirusTotal has a lot of integration with uh, all these other antivirus or EDR or cybersecurity protection spots, other organizations and companies that do this for a living. Their professional yeah, yeah. job is, hey, trying to keep the internet safe. Um, and... I was a little bit skeptical because, again, I didn't see much that made a whole lot of sense in that file. But a couple do see some indicators to so see a vast for micro AVG. Um, one thing to note is that if you upload a sample into Virus Total, they will share that and distribute yeah. it out to those other vendors. So open sourcing it pretty much. Right. But it also looks like so there was no indication of solar marker in the name of that file. And it looks like the threat label on here, it says it's a Trojan dot solar marker. Yeah. So it's actually identifying it based on the fingerprint that somebody else has shared, obviously. Oh yeah. And I could find it. Does it give you any other more information if, about this specific thing? Or is it just, to, it tells you, yes, malware confirmed, or is it more to this? It will give you more, uh, depending on how far down the rabbit hole you'd like to go. Uh, if you hop over to the details tab, it gives you the usual, oh, hey, different, fingerprint signatures or like the file hash, whether it's MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, things that it might be able to track down. But th there wasn't a whole ton here and no community notes because this was a new sample. Looks like I had to upload it and it was only first seen then. Nice, okay. So, so if this was something very popular, for example, that other people had already done research, there would be a lot more data for it. Right. Interesting, okay. So I'm just logged in super quick on Virus Total Enterprise, hey, where we have the capability and we could search for different indicators of compromise. Like, hey, those fingerprints or those breadcrumbs that tell us this was an attack from one certain kind of malware. Um, I don't know how well we could just straight up search for a URL, IP address, domain, et cetera, but we could look for, oh, the latest ransomware, the latest phishing URLs, the latest command and control URLs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For the command and control URLs, is that where pretty much the back end of this is hosted? So they have identified that it's actually available to people. Yeah. A little bit of vigilante, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, when malware that is specifically like a remote access Trojan or a rat, yeah. um, it's meant to just make your computer, the victim or the target, a bot, a decoy, a drone or a slave to whatever the heck you want it to do. Uh, the command and control server is what gives it its marching orders. It tells it, hey, go pull down these files or go extract and harvest this thing or go whatever it wants. Command and control is how you kind of, again, command and control. Yeah, of course, it's your control center, yeah. So as a bug bounty hunter, it's like very intriguing to like have these URLs and see, you know, not that I would go and become a vigilante, but it would be fun to poke at some of these and see if we can break into them 
I don't know if I want to have my IP associated with it, but you know, um, big shout out to Sam Curry, ZLZ, a couple of years ago, it wasn't a malware command and control center, but it was more of a phishing campaign for Steam mm. that he identified. And then we were working on it together. He did most of the job, he did most of the work, but we actually found it on Shodan based on a signature in its uh, headers that it would response headers. And we found like maybe 10 or 11 of them that were vulnerable. Wow. And you can just give it a blind access payload <laughs> uh, or something similar, if I remember correctly, that gave us access to the whole thing. And then we reported it to Steam or he reported it to Steam and they took some uh, precautions against it. But it right. was really interesting to see because they were caught in sessions that was always active and you can do things. And at Steam, it's with, with 2FA especially, they had something in place that was really, really cool to see. So I'm just curious, based on that you know, experience a couple of years ago, how would it have been like this? Could we track some of these on Shodan, for example? Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm looking at other domains, kind of sorting by detections to see how bad some might be. Um, and I think if we actually search by like IP address, that might give us a little bit more runway rather okay. than just the domain. Let me paste in one of the known IP addresses and... Oh! Okay. And also, it seems... Uh, is that a... No, I was going to say, it's not a AWS IP because... I don't know what I ran with him, but 108, 186, San Jose. Who owns this IP? Hi. PEG Tech. Okay. It has FTP open, which is kind of odd. I love seeing those CVs on the left side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of So it seems like it's just an outdated box that's probably been owned by somebody, and then they're just sitting on there and using it for something, right? Maybe. Oh, it's getting even better. That's a lot of open SSH. SSH. Disputed, okay, there's all disputed clients. Yeah, it's a lot of open SSH stuff, it looks like. And Nginx is running. I mean, we could just go to it. <laughs> I like to also live on the edge, so I'm okay yeah. with seeing it. Okay, so nothing okay. really, so based on just like us looking at this, it doesn't seem like, you know, it's not spooky enough, right? How does Virus Toro, why did it mark this as a potential command center? Like, what can we look into that? Yeah, so I think there is a little bit of, um, desync. I don't know if that's the right word here, but like between what virus total will know for context and what Shodan can see, like it, okay. other malware, like the actual payload or the actual deliverable malware, might make callbacks out to this domain or, or those IP, IP address. Yeah. yeah. So sending the data to this in somewhere right. it may not be a web server that we can see or something that we can see, but in some way it has a receiving that we can do it right mm -hmm. cool. and. Maybe it's using FTP to transfer files. Maybe it's using SSH to, hey, have some command and control. Yeah. Maybe the HTTP service won't respond to me because I have a default user agent. Maybe if the malware were to retrieve information from port 80, yeah. given a username or given some other keys and parameters, it could get tasking. It could do things. Yeah. So I, was, I think that tasking makes also sense because maybe it's also just collecting data and it's getting changed from somewhere else. Right. That's like maybe whitelisted as an IP address. Right? Exactly. Interesting. Okay. But I'm very curious to see why or where this was flagged. Like, you know, how did it come into this? Because I, I know it says like, you know, malware sites, known infection sources. I want to see those. Yeah. So it looks like a, a, practically every source <laughs> on here is screaming malware at us. Okay. <laughs> Except, you know, those few at the bottom. It does get Juniper to. Juniper Network said it's clean. Okay. Um, so, so that's the community tab you were showing me earlier. Someone's on something on it. It says, describes Mars Steeler as an improved successor of this. And that doesn't say how recent this was. Yeah. I'm a little confused because the same user posted 53 minutes ago and then two hours, two hours ago. ago. Steel C is one variant of a, uh, so someone's tracking this as we're tracking. Right. right yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Last analysis date was seven, seven days ago. ago. It was added about four months ago, but repeatedly being used as a distribution source for malware, clearly. So this is actually distributing is what they're saying. Instead of, you know, we assume it, I mean, that could still be true that it's receiving things, but it could also be a way that it's distributing. How does that work with that distributed? Like, is that different than just being a command control center? Right. Because I could just have a DigitalOcean droplet that has 
malware on it. Like host it and someone clicks and downloads. That, yeah. That's yeah. It. Okay. Or some other stub downloads it automatically. Uh, it could just still just be known bad for yeah hosting and har- and having some malware. So what does the, the details look like? I'm just curious to see what these look let's like. Let's go see. I don't know if there's a whole lot for it. Uh, but It's a domain who is look up, yeah. which, yeah, it's public data of some sort uh, out of Ukraine. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Oh, it was noted in Vidar Stealer, kind of as we mentioned. And yeah. URL house also tracking and then tons of other domains that look to be kind of bad on that note. So for a domain specifically on virus total, you have a little bit of limited info, but yeah, DNS records, everything. Um, and it's hosting on DNS pod, whatever, whoever uses it. But yeah, the, for the relations, would that mean that it is also, oh, there we go. So that's how it's, it's serving malware, right? right. That's synced update. UPD, not it's synced upd.exe could be how they are serving that, right? Yeah. They don't give you access to this today. Um, oh, I could go wow. click to that and go download that sample. And these are all the. Oh, that's a sketch one. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, communicating files, presumably all things that did reach out to that domain. Uh, so, these are files on the local machine that they've identified that was infected in some way, reaching out to that domain or communicating with that domain or that IP. That could be a link. So I could look for similar files on my system if I were, if I thought and you know, I ran a file that was similar to this. Right. So someone somewhere had this install set up oh. 5.exe and they uploaded it to Virus Total, and Virus Total could tell because it's dynamic analysis and the yeah. analysis what it'll do. It'll see, oh, I do know that it's communicating with that domain, and a bunch of other people have seen that just as well. So it'll organize and catalog and put them all here. So that's why Virus Total is such kind of an incredible resource because it's got this mind brain yeah. graph of the entire threat landscape. Um, and this is really, really neat, by the way, if you got to dig into the graph summary. This takes a little bit of coin, uh, so not maybe everyone could, could wow. dig into this, but that's where you get your flashy looking, ooh, we saw this domain deliver these many executable files, communicate with these other subdomains, uh, get into the who is. so a lot of power here. Okay, so I see that they give you the, so people have uploaded these files. Yeah. Could we actually download maybe that install setup 5.exe and see what it is we can try we'll see if uh virus total will let me but take a look at all the details well, he here gives you all the details already okay. yeah are you familiar with yara rules by the way i'm not have you ever heard that thing before i haven't yara it? uh so it's an acronym um for something that i forget <laughs> <laughs> Yara is one of the languages or one of the tools kind of put together that does a heck of a lot of pattern matching. Um, it's, is it, it's not the yet another ridiculous acronym. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Okay. Uh, but it, it, it's, ta- it's basically taking a lot of regular expressions and putting them on steroids um, because you could map, you could dig into, you could try to filter and identify anything that was part of a file whether it's the strings in there whether it's the bytes whether it's the yeah. operands for instructions in a binary or a program um so the whole threat intelligence community loves your rules because it it allows them to filter or zoom in on or classify whatever malware samples they want um similar things with sigma for kind of process execution detection a lot of logging analysis but yara is for specifically files um, okay. So a lot of folks will share and trigger specific rules or Yara things that can identify these. They're neat. What are these like high, medium, low infos that are it's in there? Is it what are these? You know, there's the scoring. What is it for? Yeah. So this IDS is that intrusion detection system, um, and anything like Snort or anything. I think Suricata might be in that bucket too. Okay. Uh, stuff that hey, we'll be trying to see this either at the edge or at the network and try to see we're seeing some sketchy stuff happen and how they would rate that rule or the alert that fired. Hey, do we have a high severity, absolutely things that we should dig into or do we have medium things that we should be worried about or or low that's just, hey, uh, for your information. You can see stuff from Proofpoint. You can see stuff from Snort. But those are, again, more of the rules that fire and hopefully how we can have that situational awareness and context if we ever saw that malware in our environment. It's more of a, yeah, it's like, the, I don't want to say CVE, but it gives you information on the, yeah. how, how the threat is. Okay. 
Okay, I gotta ask again. Can we download this? Let's do it. Can we do a sample of this? We could dig through a whole lot of the other things if we'd like, but let me just try to see if I can download. Zip, again, by default. Infected, Infected yep. is the usual password. Let me see if VirusTotal will let me on this account. Okay, into the malware dodge this time. Oh, the ghosts. <laughs> so this is just on background. I don't know if we want to include it or not as a funny trick. Um, but I run Huntress on my host, obviously, and it manages Defender or my antivirus for me. Uh, so I can't really turn Defender off, which means managing sense, malware is yeah. sometimes a little bit tough. Some way, somehow, I managed to squeak in one folder where I my exclusion was allowed <laughs> before uh, Huntress came over. So... Um, I can squeeze in a couple sketchy downloads in one designated drive. So I do have uh, our malware sample from VirusTotal just downloaded and accessible in a uh, Remnux distribution here. Let me go ahead and unzip this. Again, that password is infected. So now I have that big SHA-256 hash. Uh, and remember, as I would want to run file on that, ooh, we can see... Mm -hmm. That this is, is yeah. actual Windows executable, and the Nullsoft installer self-extracting archive is usually a little bit sketchy. Um, not always, but that's kind of a common thing. Uh, let's go see if we could make this a little bit easier on ourselves and use some of those online resources to analyze uh, malware. We could do this on our own. We could do this, I don't know, hey, fire open a debugger, fire open a yeah. disassembler, maybe use some of the system, like, Sys internals tools, monitor processes, monitor API calls, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you need, you need a lab for yourself if you wanted to monitor it. So I'm assuming what you're showing me now on screen is a lab environment. Absolutely. Just, okay, it's, it's like a service for this kind of thing. Okay. This is totally the easy button, um, but it's great. So I could have my own machine and look at all these calls on my machine personally. You need to find a wire shard and see what's being sent out. But they allow you to do it within, and they give you everything. Yeah. Okay. You got to be a little bit safe and cautious because obviously running compute, running the malware, even in your VM, could still be a little bit spooky. You yeah. might be a little bit concerned. Not saying anyone has like a virtual machine escape exploit, but you'd rather not really roll the dice. <laughs> it's not something that I want to, I don't want to do that more, you, the more you screw around, the right. more you find out. Yeah, I don't want to do that in the case of a malware, <laughs> something like this that's been online for a while, but okay. There are a lot of tools that help alongside this. There's Joe Sandbox, VirusTotal, I think, can do some dynamic analysis. Um, triage is a big one. Hatching, Hatchling, Cuckoo Sandbox. Yeah. Uh, but any run I am a big fan of, truthfully. I'm a little bit partial to them. But we could try to dig in and see this in action. So I'm logged into any run, uh, and it's very, very cool because it'll tell you all the things that are submitted to it uh, and all the different locations as to what's been known and found to be malicious or suspicious, et cetera, uh, and all the different tags and trends of what they tend to see a lot of. And I see some of those countries a lot more <laughs> right than some of the others. Right. So I will try to create a new task here, and let's see if it will let me. Um, we, if we were in like pro mode or simple mode, we could choose potentially an operating system that we would like, but you do kind of need, again, a little bit of coin yeah. to do something other than Windows 7. But pro mode at least allows us to change, hey, where are we kind of starting from? Or are we gonna be using anything specific for an internet browser or even what software is installed in the environment? So that's really nice. So this is in case it relies on a secondary application for whatever reason you can install it. So let's say if it's like a, I see Adobe Flash in there. So yeah. if it requires Adobe Flash to be installed for some god awful reason, <laughs> but it allows, that's really cool. Okay. Yeah. And you could even run it with a specific command line. If you were working with a DLL or something else, you could even put it somewhere else so that way you could invoke it naturally rather than on your own, rather than like automatically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you could even, hey, route network traffic through Tor or use a VPN or really, really slick stuff. So, again, huge fan of what we could do with them. Uh, but let's see if we can upload our – that thing. So that is that hash, and it should be able to change its own file extension even if it didn't have a .exe in there. Um, and it will run automatically as a public task. Again, it takes some coin to run a private task, but hopefully we'll see what it does. Fingers crossed. So it'll give us about a minute of runtime. Uh, we could add more time, but it looks like it immediately started to fire up a broom. I was going to say, what is broom.ac? Um, I see is like this 
browsers, system. Thankfully, we could see some of the notes here, and this is kind of the neat things of any run telling you, this is Sketch, automatically drops its own file executable after. So it looks like this is supposed to be something that cleans your system? Sounds like it, but I'm curious if it's a scam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see if we can get ourselves a little bit more time. And the benefit of being inside of any run is that it is interactive. So I could just click into these things if I wanted to. But it's already making some connections to, okay, probably just local. Yeah, bit. local, but... So the example, one of the things that we looked at with the showdown stuff that we're looking at, this would be a place you would see those IP addresses pop up, mm. right? So this is where would, you can see it's sending requests to another command center. So this, practically this is where you can get that data from. Right. Wow, okay. Ah, so it's cleaning the recycle, recycle bin. bin, but it looks like any run could see, you know what? It tried to steal some things from your web browsers, stealing personal data, actions look like stealing personal data and running CMD just to empty the recycle bin is odd. What else could we do? You know that example that I asked you earlier in the video? I think it's a really good example of like people that go, oh, my computer's running really slow. Yeah. I want to find something that like speeds it up. You know, like I'm sure people that are in the, the next generation, like the older generation is <laughs> very prone to doing these kinds of things. They think they're cleaning things up, but then probably their bank account is being stolen and things like that. Wow. Now, I'm a little bit curious. I want to see kind of exactly what it thinks it's doing. So I want to let this go for a bit. Maybe I'll try a couple more cleaning, quote yeah. unquote. But thankfully, any run will let us see exactly what it did for those stealing of Could files. Can we see what the, what the stealing of the files yep. or the browsers? I'm yeah, you want to go right yeah, to it? absolutely. So if I click in here, it will tell me that it does create... Global, global history, history for opera which is odd also yeah. reads for still that, that, that opera. again that again all right let's stop it running interactively and let's see if it can give us the kind of uh post-mortem yeah the more info sections where we can get a little bit more cool stuff. Um, you can see the processes that ran and any of the more specific things that it did. So I'm assuming like this is, there's some truth to it because I could take, you know, empty recycle bin. Right. It's doing those things to, you know, as a decoy to show it's doing some stuff, yeah. right? But no, then, but you don't get to see as a user, the end user is the, the, the QC sub, as you call it, in the background that happens. I am curious though, what else, if anything, yeah, like is What is the personal doing? data in there? Oh, uh, no, the cache. it is maybe Chrome. getting some stuff from Chrome. So I'm assuming it's if it's doing regardless of if you have these browser, it's looking for it and then selling data based on that. Yeah, and this is why I'm curious if it did any networking requests or HTTP things to try like to where it's sending it. Yeah, I don't see any currently. And I'm curious if, it, oh, it's it's a cleaner program did actually did this. Uh, I'm not positive yet. Now that we stopped this, I want to ask you a couple of things. So that's the process that we fitted. That's a long file that we had that you uploaded into this. Right. So then that invokes broom.exe, right, mm -hmm. which is a cleaner that we have. Right. And then they're assuming that based on the activity from broom, that this could be malware because it's doing some sketchy things. That could be actually a cleaner, but also it looks just super sketchy. Yeah. Well, because it's funny when you have like a, a cleaner application because it will go through your cache and it will go through like to remove temporary things. So that's why I'm a little still kind of scratching my head. Is it actually stealing personal data or doing anything sketchy? Um, or is it just deleting all of these? It did drop the self-contained binary, and then it did use a command prompt to clean the recycle bin and things, but it didn't send any HTTP requests out or connections other than local. So I wonder if it genuinely was a cleaner. Uh, I but I'm saying like with, with so if this was actually, you know, we're gonna assume for the sake of the video that this isn't maybe, maybe this is not your best cleaner you could get for your machine. Right. <laughs> but if there was, you know, if this was done, maybe it's not even done with the process at the end is what it invokes that connection. We would see immediately when that connection is made that says, hey, it just made this connection, this sketchy IP address. Oh yeah. And it sent that to it. Very cool, okay. And if we wanted to, I mean, we could try to look at some of those. Oh, we could try to upload something else uh, from this virus. It's a public tool. one that already says it's malicious, so we can maybe it's easier because it's public already. Yeah. So we clicked into another sample, tst.exe, I think is the real name. Again, yeah. dropped out of this indicator hash. But this one is noted as malicious, and I think probably for a pretty good reason. That is NJRAT, 
which is again another one of those known remote access Trojan. There are some YAR rules for that. And it yeah. does connect to a command and control server, matches some Suricata rules. We could dig into the more info if we wanted to, but I'm really interested in that netsh.exe. Yeah, what is that? That's one of the um, Windows binaries, again, sort of natural native, just in your system 32 folder that you can manipulate the firewall with. So it genuinely adds itself. <laughs> it says unable. <laughs> it allows yeah. it through the firewall so we can just kind of run unhindered. So this is actually being dropped as it executes. Immediately, the first thing it is doing is saying, hey, do the firewall, allow me to do whatever I want. Right. Wow, okay. And then what about the connections? I know there's no there's nothing being made with the HTTP. What about connections? Anything interesting? So looks like maybe some boilerplate stuff from service host and system, but the TSST EXE, which we know was a little bit sketchy, did call out to Brazil. Wow, that IP, that IP address. IP address. And the domain is kind of neat here. What is that? I'm going to actually look that IP address up on one of these sites to see what's on it. One of the coolest things, too, if I may, is it'll give you the PCAP. So if you wanted to, you could look at all of that network traffic. But wow. we can view it as text. And you can see, hey, it stole the enumeration. This was the host name, user PC. This is the username that ran it. This is the operating system. And then some base 64 encoded data all got sent to that command and control server. Curious to see what that base 64 string is. I mean, we, we can find out. I don't know. I, I just I wasn't saying the ethical purpose, but I would love to see what that is. Yeah. Let's, uh, Let's see what that is. Slap that in. Program manager, manager. for that one. 108.inf. I wonder if that's just own configuration thing. Oh, and there's a random dot ACT. The same thing is at the bottom. It's the oh, same okay. exact stream. Okay. What is this? Yeah. The user PC admin. <laughs> ah, okay. So that's a password. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that might be. That's odd. So that is being either used somewhere or maybe that is a, could that be for that machine maybe? It might be. Wait, so here's a question. Yeah. Could we look for that stream across everything to see anything on any of these sources have that password that could be connected to anything else um we could do that on virus total we could try i think we could use yara to do a yara retro hunt so it'd be cool to see i'm assuming they're gonna reuse this password anything right else, so I didn't see or hacked else. underscore something basically yeah, yeah. Or... interesting okay i honestly think this is a really cool stopping point for this it's giving me a lot of stuff to go look at i've always been curious to know like if I get my hands on malware, like what do I do with it? Right? I recommend yeah. so many people, you know, they, they open sourced it. I see all these tweets of like people talking about it, like they post samples online. Yeah. I see you post samples, like talk about it. And I've always been curious, like where do I go to like, I want to play, I want to see, not so much because I want to get in that realm, but it's just, it's a fascinating thing to do. This is what, you know, it's, it's happening to some of these companies. This is how people are getting hacked into. Some companies are being ransomware and things like that and understanding like, there is a safe sandbox for me to go play in that yeah. isn't going to ruin my entire, you know, system that I have at home, my host at least, right? This is really cool. Thank you for teaching me all of your ways, man. This was, I think, uh, I think I speak for all the, the, the followers and the YouTube viewers and then their homies that I think if they come from a background like me and like bug bounty hunting and they want to make that switch, whether it's out of interest or whether it's for a professional reason, Honestly, I may consider for professional reasons to yeah. go more into these, but thank you for doing that, man. I really appreciate it. Well, hey, it's a lot of fun, uh, and this is like scratching the surface. There's so much more uh, as we dig into the iceberg, but there, it's it's a whole lot of fun. So glad you're into it.